my adventure started when I was a kid, and I had no uh, idea that um, that my that that the impact of the first uh, documentary I saw as a six-year-old should you know sort of create a, a, a my way in the world, and uh, that was a documentary about the Kontiki expedition. Thor Heyerdahl that sailed from Peru to uh, Polynesia. And as you can see, that little fleet in front of me is my little Kantiki fleet. <laughs> uh, when I saw the uh, documentary five years later, when I st was in school, it was a total different uh, movie. And I realized that kids get different pictures in, s in, in, in their head when they see uh, sort of documentaries that are made, maybe made for adults. At this point, I was dreaming about sailing on all oceans, meeting uh, uh, kids on my own uh, age with different colors. And on the fleet, I should have all the goodies that, uh, that I could uh, get from my parents, you know, all the sweet stuff that kids are not allowed to get only on um, Saturdays, at least it was in the old days. Uh, the dream about uh, sailing on the all the wide uh, oceans uh, lasted only two years for me. I got seasick and I have never ever dreamed about open water uh, sailing until two weeks ago. Uh, then I was um, uh, sailing on uh, the Contiki, the Contiki fleet that is actually appears in the new movie Contiki. The fleet is called Tangaroa. It copied the Kontiki's uh, uh, voyage six years ago. And uh, I invited my, my oldest grandson because just get some new ideas into his head because he has, his dream is really clear. He wants to become a professional soccer player. That's very clear. <laughs> but I just wanted to invite him and we talk about Contique, I would talk about dreams. So I'm really inter it, I'm looking forward to discuss, you know, how this impact with, you know, experience this, this voyage, the movie, the documentary, you know, you know, in 10 years, in 20 years, how, you know, how his path is going. I I dreamed about this. I got a dream about the South Pole when I was eight and a half years old, right, reading about Roald Amundsen, the first man that reached the, the South Pole. I, I'm 41 year here when I'm actually on my way to the South Pole. I had no idea that uh, it was something strange dreaming about the South Pole, being a girl dreaming about the South Pole until I was about 12 years old, I was uh, with, uh, with my school brass band to, to a trip to Germany and was 10 girls sitting in a room and exchanging dreams. All my friends were dreaming about a big house, fancy car and a handsome husband in that number sort of. And uh, I thought how boring, you know, to dream about something that would come automatically to you when you grew up, I was thinking at that time. But uh, so it was when my turn came, I said, well, my dream is to ski to the South Pole. And I still remember their reaction. Was I stupid? It was impossible. It was a boy's dream. But luckily, I just ke kept, you know, the, that dream inside my heart. And I was, had that feeling that was something wrong with me. So I took years before I articulated that dream again. It took many years, and uh, I was, I'm 41 years old, and I'm actually on my way to the South Pole in, 40, uh, uh, in 94. Um, times, sometimes this time has to be right, you know, in, in, in life. And I had skied in the Arctic, I had skied on all the uh, mountain plateaus in Norway, so I thought I was really uh, prepared. But when I, after the two weeks, I came into an area with high sestrugis that was taller than me, uh, like skiing on a frozen stormy ocean. My sled weighed about uh, 100 kilos, so I pulled it up, and, I, and when the sled was on the top, I had to run to avoid it, you know, because I was uh, pulling it in a, in, in a rope. So I started to swear, swear at my sled, swear at the Sestrugis, and I'm just telling you the story, because you probably experienced something similar to get irritated about something you can, you can do nothing about. It could be a decision or it could be a person. But I felt that I was so exhausted of going skiing, being irritated. So the third day I was laying in my sleeping bag and telling myself, Liv, you can't go here swearing for 50, 60 days. You will <laughs> be exhausted when you reach the South Pole. 
So I was thinking and I told myself, okay, from tomorrow, you will imagine that you ski in a gallery with modern art. And that changed my uh, expedition totally. I saw uh, pictures in the snow, pictures in the sky, and got the energy back. I reached the, the Salt Pole um, uh, Christmas Eve 1994, and I think that's the best uh, Christmas present I'll ever get. At that time, I was a high school teacher, and when I came back home, I was starting to, uh, started to talk about dreams, and uh, I was a teacher in literature, so that my students that you know, had hard to, to write essays, there was no problem writing about their dreams. And I remember in the, the summer holiday, I got a postcard from one of my students. He said, leave, thank you. You opened my eyes. I do not have to become a lawyer like my dad. And then I realized this is something, I could do something with this. And uh, the same summer, I got a letter from an American explorer, Anne Bancroft. She had, she had combined, she's the first woman to ski to the uh, North Pole. She has been also been on an expedition in Antarctica to the South Pole with a group of American women, combining education and, and adventure. So we planned to cross the Antarctic continent uh, creating the biggest educational program on internet, that was our goal, to be the first women to cross Antarctica and to remain friends on the other side <laughs> and have fun. <laughs> we trained, sail, that is the fun part of our preparation. This is the more boring part, pulling car tires to get the, get the strength. But you see, yeah, we have to t t you know, train for what we are going to do. So, um, so here it is, uh, sleds with 150 kilos of equipment. We were test persons for NASA, making uh, uh, psychological tests uh, every Sunday. We um, uh, were also communicating with kids from all over the world. We got a message from our um, team in Minneapolis that we had connected with 3 million kids in 116 different countries. At that time, we had a problem with the, with the wind. With Antarctica is the most windful continent in the world, but we were delayed. So this, we made a sort of a, uh, if we didn't reach the South Pole within January 16th, we would uh, uh, abandoned the expedition. But we reached the South Pole January 17th and continued. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a plan. When we reached the other side of the continent, we um, wanted to go back to, to, to teaching. We had two attempts to, uh, cre to, uh, to reach the, the, uh, the Arctic Ocean. And I'm sorry, this uh, doesn't work very well. Um, so, uh, so here we are, friends on the other side, and uh, we had two attempts to, um, to the Arctic Ocean. Uh, we had created two different curriculums, and uh, we want to go back to Antarctica next year. The goal is to uh, reach um, 50 million kids. This is something wrong here. <laughs> Can you just go on? Uh, our goal is, the, we call it Access Water 2013. And um, our goal is to, um, to m uh, educate 50 million uh, youth. If you start in the bottom of this slide, we want to raise the awareness of 50 million young uh, kids or youth. If we can create the, the uh, engagement with 50% of them are engaged and do something, we, uh, we and at the end, 25% really become active. Uh, and, and, and our goal is to, um, to create a movement that young people help young people. And the technology is uh, the four A's, um, awareness, to identify the is, is, issue, analysis, to understand the causes and the effects, and advocacy, develop an agenda for action, and action. And the action is different on each continent, on each country, like Zimbabwe and Norway is very, very different. The symbol of having one woman from each continent is that um, 
uh, to an sort of anchor the curriculum uh, on each continent. Uh, we are s eight women, different ages, in the 20s, 40s, 50s. I might be 60 yes, next year. And uh, different culture, different religion, different experience. So symbolically, we have to cooperate to reach the South Pole. We are, it's an 80 days expedition. And as we all have to cooperate to solve the freshwater issue. Here is the team. And um, you will also have, uh, we have a training. Uh, we have tra this is from the uh, training trip last March. We got a really heavy storm, 24 meters per second. So the learning curve was like that. So that was, uh, uh, that was a great experience for all of us. We also started to create a documentary. And you will meet some of the participants here. I think this is bigger than I ever imagined. Our goal, I think, would be to bring awareness and to, to show people that we need to make a difference and we need to impact and motivate each other, have an impact on each other's lives to, to really bring about change in the world. Nothing is impossible. Uh, the limitation is only in mind. Once you make up your mind, you can do anything. I think the strength in the group is the values that we all share, um, the passion that we have. Um, some more so for the physical side than others, but um, I think at a, at a really fundamental level, we, we believe in people and we believe in, in the human spirit and being able to achieve things and change people's attitudes. That is the strength. We'll tell other women also this is also possible to develop that can-do spirit. And I think that we'll make a very big impact, hopefully, in the world and in raising awareness on the challenges we face, especially as women. Change the attitude, to change the vision, to change the consciousness. And when you are going the right direction, and you do one step at a time, then you will be there, that's for sure. So I hope you all join us, uh, if you know educators, if you know uh, teachers, if you know you have kids, grandchildren that are uh, interested in um, adventure and, uh, and nature, so please join us. Thank you.